Okay, just give me one second. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, a very uh, a very warm good evening to one and all present over here it's not a warm i okay i can say a very cool good evening to one and all present over here i am prabhakar and i am currently uh, leading this club google developer student club at my campus so uh, basically this is uh, the first event of explore with ml with crowdsourcing Okay, I hope the screen is visible. Yes, uh, so this is a beginner session uh, wherein we will be we will be mainly focusing on the introduction part of the machine learning and also we'll be talking about a unique app which has been uh, introduced by Google that is crowdsource and it is something also called as crowdsourcing. So it's a very interesting thing which uh, they have uh, come up with. So I would like to also introduce you with all those concepts wherein in the crowdsource app, you guys can contribute in the application so that you guys can, uh, your contributions are weekly recognized and uh, the highest uh, contribution contributor of the week is also recognized by Google. So basically what crowdsourcing is and uh, what all uh, things are included in the crowdsourcing, uh, I will explain you. So basically, uh, I hope everyone is present. So I'll be putting one uh, link in the chat box. You guys can check the chat box. One second. So can you please check the chat box, everyone? Sneha, not that one, Sneha. Sneha. Yep, uh, take the Prabhakar's link, I just- The out. second link, the second yeah. link. Uh, the second link which has been uh, sent by me in the chat box, you guys can take that link to download the crowdsource app from Google Play Store. Uh, that link because it will uh, they will keep a track of students who are uh, you know uh, getting enrolled in the application from various different campuses so our campus i am representing my campus as a facilitator so basically it will be uh, kept in the record that you guys have joined from gdsc uh, gndc be there okay so can you just give me a confirmation you know, heads up how many of you have taken that link to download that? Just a yes or no? Yeah, Prabhakar, I just now downloaded it. Okay. Others? Make sure everyone downloads the app, everyone present in the meeting. Am I good to go? People? Hello. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so, I am sharing one more screen. You guys can see a mobile screen is being shared. 
can you guys see the mobile screen yeah. being shared yeah so this is the crowdsourcing application basically uh, you guys have to take the link once again i'll post it in the chat box new participants have joined meeting download the crowdsource app using my link okay which i have sent in the chat box so now this this is a app which you can check uh, you can just uh, click on your profile and uh, move to crowdsource settings then you have here invite code you guys can check your code uh, it should be present that 9c uh, this code should be present already there 9c b a a 8 okay so this code should be present there and uh, that's because you guys are getting enrolled from our campus okay i am facilitating this ml campaign so it is recognized that these many candidates are from gndec be there so that's the main purpose of uh, taking this link to download the app okay again new participants have joined i'm again uh, putting the same link in the chat box you guys can check uh, and here uh, there, there are weekly contributors okay uh, weekly contributors will be decided on based on your contributions made to this app so you guys can take uh, these many there are so many games it's it's like it's very fun app you guys can uh, uh, over through the app you guys can check different versions of it uh, so many sections are included such as image label verification uh, sentiment evaluation audio validation start camera all these things are there the more you contribute to the crowdsource app uh, the more your points will be increased in this there are different levels okay 11 1 2 3 and uh, the number of contributions are reflected here in your achievements uh, part you can see in my uploads also or uh, the straight away win uh, straight away uh, on your screen it is shown that uh, level zero where you can uh, check out your stars and badges okay so you guys can uh, go through this and view all levels you can see how many levels then uh, earn your level badge you can earn your level badge then you can uh, gain access to the community newsletters which are being released weekly on weekly basis by gdsc okay so these many things are being done so it's really fun app it's uh, very much interesting you guys can be get, you guys can get recognition uh, for uh, contributing uh, to the crowdsource app once again who all have joined please take the link which is in the chat box to download the crowdsource app which will reflect the number of students which are being uh, you know enrolled to the app through Guru Nanak Dev Engineering College Beader as I am facilitating this ML campaign. Okay, so now this part is done. This was very important. Uh, you guys can check out these things. It's very, it's, it's very, it's not complicated actually. It's very fun way to learn. What this thing is all about is I'll explain you. Uh, the people, uh, the, the the developers from Google. Uh, are organizing such contributions, society-based contributions, because a machine requires training data. Training data as in we, we need to teach a machine what it has to do. So training data is required. So uh, a machine to recognize if a, if, if a object is cat or dog, it requires a set of training data. On that basis, a machine is being trained. So crowdsourcing is a platform to extract all the training data from the society, from students, and uh, to sort and help the machine train in the Google. So this is a very interesting part. It's also a uh, beneficiary for them and also for students uh, to get recognized weekly. They have uh, made a schedule that weekly contributors, weekly, whoever is highly contributing to the crowdsourcing app, will get some recognition and also access to the uh, community uh, facilitate uh, community newsletters okay here are all the badges you can see on the screen contributor narrator good listener treasure hunter glider photographer explorer uh, photographer explorer pilot 
and uh, sentiment sentiment analysis quarter uh, and all those things are included i request you guys to explore this app and uh, only download this app taking through the link which i have sent in the chat box now this was all about the introduction part so today we will be learning about different things uh, which you have never heard of i believe uh, i mean most of them are juniors or uh, maybe final year students are aware of the topics which i am talking about but the juniors who are, who are coming from third year or second year or first year they are not aware of these things so machine learning is the very you know a trending topic industry trend which is going on so we will be talking about that in today's session we will be mainly focusing on the introductory part and i will be sharing all the resources by the end of this meeting we will make sure there will be more than 3 to 4 sessions to get you a good uh, beginner experience in the machine learning and i personally assure you i will provide my constant support personally or in the group you guys can reach out to me anytime if you have any doubt i will try my level best to uh, get them right okay so these are the points now i request Shrishti to take it from here. She will be taking you uh, to the introductory part of crowd sourcing, which I have already said. But she will be uh, briefing more about it. So I request Shrishti to take it from here. I will <clears throat> change my. I hope the screen is visible. Shrishti? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Shrishti Vosle from IC Department 6M. So today's session is going to be all about the basic introduction to machine learning. We will understand what exactly machine learning is and how it is different. how it is different from uh, our traditional uh, how it is different from the traditional rule based approach before that first i want you to ask how many of you heard about machine learning or how many of you have never heard about machine learning just tell me just tell me in the chat once i think most of you have heard about it and it's really nice so let's get into this i will be uh, has the bhaiya has shared the screen i hope all of you are able to see the screen before i want to ask you one question where in our daily life have you seen machine learning being used i want you to come with an example can anyone tell me where we are being using the machine learning in our daily life can anyone okay uh, uh, i will tell you uh, like we are uh, using the machine learning in google search and we are using machine learning in uh, uh, image recognition in uh, in image in image recognition in autonomous driving in spam filters like image spam filters uh, and face recognition okay and in most important in ads we using most of the machine learning is being used so as we all know where we were using the machine learning in our daily lives which means that you should know that machine learning is very very important right now every industry uses machine learning and we were finding new application almost every day we are coming with the new algorithms i am so glad that most of you are here to learn about it with me today so let's get started with this wonderful video that tell you about machine learning but before that i have to say that what is learning learning is nothing but acquiring the knowledge the knowledge through studies through experiences or you get the data and uh, you learn from that data but did you know that computers can do the same things so to understand it more briefly let us play this 
wonderful video that tell us what is machine learning. Oh, the ability to learn and get better at tasks through experience is part of being human. When we're born, we know almost nothing and can do almost nothing for ourselves. But soon, we're learning and becoming more capable every day. But did you know that computers can do the same? Machine learning brings together statistics and computer science to enable computers to learn how to do a given task without being programmed to do so. Just as your brain uses experience to improve at a task, so can computers. Say you need a computer that can tell the difference between a picture of a dog and a picture of a cat. You could begin by feeding it images and telling it, this one's a dog, that one's a cat. A computer program to learn will see statistical patterns within the data that will enable it to recognize a cat or a dog in the future. It might figure out on its own that cats have shorter noses and that dogs come in a larger variety of sizes, and then represent that information numerically, organizing it into pieces. But, crucially, it's the computer, not the programmer, that identifies those patterns and establishes the algorithm by which future data will be sorted. One example of a simple yet highly effective algorithm is to find the optimal line separating cats from dogs. When the computer sees a new picture, it checks which side of the line it falls on and then says either cat or dog. But of course, there can be mistakes. The more data a computer receives, the more finely tuned its algorithm becomes, and the more accurate it can be in its predictions. Machine learning is already widely applied. It's the technology behind facial recognition, text and speech recognition, spam filters on your inbox, online shopping or viewing recommendations, credit card fraud detection, and so much more. At the University of Oxford, machine learning researchers are combining statistics and computer science to build algorithms that can solve more complex problems more efficiently, using less computing power. From medical diagnoses to social media, the potential of machine learning to transform our world is truly mind-blowing. To find out more about machine learning, visit oxfordsparks.ox.ac.uk, follow us on Twitter and find us on Facebook. Okay, right. So, a very important part of this video is we learn about the cat and the dog identification. How does a machine understand what's a cat and what's a dog? So, we show to a machine a pictures of the dog and the cat and it learns what it looks like and we don't tell it how to learn. So, like this video says that maybe the machine figures out that cats can have shorter nose. Maybe the, maybe the machine learns that dogs have various sizes. Now we don't tell machine these things. The machine draws their conclusion by itself through the examples, through the data, and that is what is the important about machine learning. Uh, that is what about the important of machine learning. In this session and in the coming session, so we are trying to use certain algorithms that allows this machine to learn on its own and classify two different things so that basically what machine is learning. Okay, now let's play a very interesting game. So in the beginning of the session, um, I have asked all of you to download the crowdsource app as the screen has been shared by Prabhakar Bhaya. Hope you all guys have been downloaded the app. Uh, downloaded the app. He uh, downloaded the app. And the who do not downloaded it, please download the app. Uh, uh, download the app, and you can go there after downloading the app. You open it and go to this particular option that is known as smart camera. So once you go there here, once you go there there here what you do take this smart camera and point it at any object in your house you may uh, be sitting in front of the laptop so you can point it at the laptop or you could uh, point any of the things that are in front of you okay uh, just point it at one object and see if it is identifies that object or not so this is what it looks like you open the smart camera, 
has the uh, as you can see on the screen uh, uh, it looked like you open the smart camera and you can point it at an object and you after pointing that object when you click on that particular focused frame it let you know what the object is so you can either type in s if it recognize the object correctly or you can click on no and add a description if it identified it incorrectly so let's have a quick discussion so next slide there okay now let's have a quick discussion uh, about uh, how does the image identification work from these things i mostly understand that it actually scans the object and tries to go through its data that what it looks like and it also go through all the each and every pixel of it and gets to know the data as we all know that it has a lot of data with itself and uh, now we learn how actually the identification work has i uh, has you all know that every object have its own set of features there are certain defining features that characterized or help you to differentiate and identify that particular object so that's what our machine learning model does you can think of it working in the uh, working it like similar of the human eyes what we does it is trying to look at the object and answer what the object is okay now next uh, next question is how is it recognizing the object here it is basically using this camera type system that's there that's there uh, is the smart camera or the camera that you have in your phones it is using that uh, using it trying to focus its areas around the object you are pointing and it's going through a list of data or the data it has and trying to match an object that has similar features to this and then it's giving you a result uh, of a result next we have next question how could we program this we can program this by giving the similar data to the machine next slide next slide pehle ki first oh next 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 okay here we in to play it is also a fun type game i hope you guys enjoy it next play here we have to go on and click on that link pe click kijiye i'm sharing the link in the chat box one second is my screen visible yep yep okay shrishti continue i see rainbow or tooth or helmet or snake or octopus i see bat i see camel or roller coaster sorry i couldn't guess it i see here or moon or circle or clock or blueberry i see a or strawberry or hedgehog or apple i see onion or alarm clock sorry i couldn't guess it I see line or keyboard or pickup truck I see circle I see fire truck You like this 
poor truck, poor car. I'm stumped. I see moon, or blueberry, or Sorry, ring. I couldn't guess Sorry, it. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. Did you guys understand? I see star. I hope you guys understand it, what it's trying to say. If it recognizes, if we draw the object correctly, then it will say that I recognize it. And if we do not draw the uh, object correctly, sorry, I couldn't guess it. So something like this, this may be, you can try and let me know how it went for you all. So let's take uh, a look of the data that is there behind it. Before that, let's, we have the quick discussion. The next slide. Here we have, how does the game work? Here it all already being trained on the data that is being given at some point. And okay, this data is all also crowd contribution. Some people uh, submit the pictures of their phone or anything. And they said, this is the phone. And that's how the model knows. It's a, it's a phone, but there is much less chance of that data is being wrong. Okay, next, how is it recognizing your drawing? Here, it is recognizing your drawing by using the features. Now, let me tell you what is meant by features in machine learning. Features are just, are the variables, or the variables which distinguish one example from another. So, suppose we are talking about the different species of fruits. Okay. If you want to make the differentiate between the dis two different fruits, we use the uh, color as one feature as apple has red color and orange has the orange color and grapes have green color. And we use the weight as the another feature. Like this, we distinguish between the two objects. by uh, We recognize by your drawing. Now, how could we program this? Has we have... I have to uh, tell before only that we can give the similar data to the machine to uh, to uh, uh, to program this to uh, program uh, this next slide. How does ML work in quick draw? Now we we will see how it works. Here, here we saw that 50 millions or 50 millions of players have been contributed millions of drawing. Here, so you can so you can look at all these different types of drawing. Here for each, so if you click on the apple. There are so many different ways a person has drawn the apple. Is that it takes each of these. So all of these are the apples. These are the different ways that people have drawn the apple. So, uh, mod so the model has used all this data and it's trained on that to understand uh, the features of the apple. Here, as we know that the apple is full circle and at the top of it has a stem and a leaf is sticking at it. And some people have also drawn the half-eaten apples and there are some complete apples. It uses all this data that's given to in from the people and it tries to identify the features that are, that make it different, the features that basically uniquely help us to identify an apple okay next next slide please. next So particular object as we are seeing that here we are seeing the carrot and here the carrot. So there are different ways in which people has drawn the carrots and the model has used all this to learn how to differentiate or how to identify a carrot like this. We used to uh, get the knowledge uh, we used to 
uh, get the knowledge from this that how the machine is going to learn through the patterns that we have drawn and given different peoples give the different patterns through which the machine can able to understand the features and identify what is uh, meant uh, understand what exactly what exact features that carrot have or any other examples can we take okay now nisha will continue from uh, from from now onwards a very good evening to everyone i'm nisha from ec department 6m so you all guys well know about the machine learning but there is a two uh, there is two approaches uh, from uh, we can draw the quick draw quick draw from rule based and machine learning we, uh, machine learning you all know about machine learning but rule based is a, there is a some set of uh, rules uh, which we can behave uh, for example if object height, height is uh, greater than 10 do x if object color is blue do y if object number of legs uh, greater than 2 do z uh, so the rule based is a, there is a some set of rules uh, which we can behave from the goal of the product designers and the engineers develop from a logic so we can uh, so we can uh, met the uh, the real goal next okay now from machine learning machine learning it is a very easy easy approach from the goal the product train model using example then we can reach the goals are met next so now i will ask some uh, approaches you all guys uh, should answer in uh, chat box um i will ask one question which approach is used you guys just uh, put your answer on a chat box alphabetizing a list of a song titles which approach we use no responses yeah it's a rule based approaches yeah exactly ha next yeah it's rule based approach after this ranking web search results ranking web uh, search result which approach we can use yeah exactly machine learning machine learning yeah yeah uh, even rule based also uh, because the uh, ranking uh, uh, we can uh, set up, uh, we can rule also and machine learning also we can uh, see our results next predicting housing prices based on a location which approach you use predicting housing prices based on location yeah yeah it's it's machine learning yeah after this uh processing online payments processing online payments which approach you use yeah rule based exactly uh next classifying an object in a photo which approach we use yeah machine learning yeah correct answers after this some recap of a rule based approach and machine learning a uh, rule based approach and machine learning they both have their uh, own uh, benefits uh, machine learning having their benefits is uh, we can use their in a uh, um, scope improvement wide, uh, wide range of applications uh, possibly of high errors also and uh, and the um, rule based uh, um, rule based approaches we can use availability cost efficient mm. speed you can optimize the system as you know all the parts of the system yeah rule based are defined and machine learning are from data improvements come from algorithms and network in the rule based approach and the machine learning improvements may from the additional data yeah after this nilambika will take the session Uh, am i audible yeah hello okay thank you uh, yes. good evening everyone okay good evening everyone i am somya from 6m ifc hope you all are doing good so as nisha gave an explanation on uh, traditional software and machine learning 
so we came to know that each has its own benefits now suppose think we have a idea that is any kind of business idea so now we will discuss how we will implement this idea using machine learning and the process of machine learning so basically machine learning process has three phases first is data second is modeling and third is producting yeah keep this slide so in the first phase we need to identify the input data in order to make successful predictions after identifying we need to use some tools to draw insights about the data so it all depends on the more we know about the data in more better way we can explain about our data now data can be collected by joining different data sources and in order to get better predictions we need to maintain clean data now the second phase that is the modeling here for a model to make predictions it uh, needs training so training will be like first there are lessons to learn from the data and there are some quizzes to check knowledge that helps in uh, correcting any misunderstandings okay so in the end there will be a final exam where we will split the data into three sets that is uh, training validation and the test so in the training set model processes data for the first time processes uh, means it infers patterns in the data to make predictions so now after the first set we are having the trained data so in the validation we will quiz that trained data so we can achieve the goal of getting the best model quality so after this validation set we have a best model quality now in the test set if the model predicts well uh, if the model predicts well it passes the course and it will be ready for the use now moving to the third phase that is production phase in this phase we need to figure out whether our model interacts with users so in many cases the model needs retraining with new data in order to pick up new patterns so this phase involves fixing bugs and adding features for the better interactions with the users now let's go through one video which uh, in which we will uh, learn more about uh, machine learning process and its phases so let's move to the first video prabhakar yeah this Prabhakar, you are on mute. We can't hear the music. Music or not? is the sound ideal state. Data needs to be collated, possibly by joining different data sources, and cleaned for the machine learning model to work optimally. Cleaner data results in better predictions. For a machine learning problem, you start with the input data and convert it into features. Features are key properties of the data. 
for a supervised machine learning problem, you transform the outcome into labels. Labels represent the intended output of the machine learning system. Joining data sources, cleaning the data, and engineering the features and labels take time. Plan on spending a large portion of your time in the data phase. Modeling phase. Along with the features and labels, you set up the kind of machine learning system needed called the model. Researchers have created all sorts of machine learning models, from simple to complex. Some models classify data. Other models predict numeric values. Tools like Google's TensorFlow support many types of machine learning models for various uses. Before a model can make predictions, it needs training, which is like sending the model to school. First, there are lessons to learn from the data. Along the way, there are quizzes to check knowledge and correct any misunderstandings. In the end, there's a final exam. When training the model, you split the data into three sets, training, validation, and test. The training set corresponds to lessons. Here, the model processes data for the first time. It starts to infer patterns in the data to help make predictions. After you've trained the model once, you quiz it using the validation set. Based on how well the model does on the quiz, you may decide to adjust the model settings or hyperparameters, which are like dials and switches for changing the model's behavior, and retrain the model again to give it the quiz again. The goal is to iteratively find settings that provide the best model quality on the validation set. When the model meets your success criteria, it's time for the final exam. Feed your model the test set. If the model predicts well, it passes the course and is ready for real use. Once your ML system is ready for the world, it's time to move the system into production. For starters, your system may need integration into a product. You need to figure out what this integration looks like and whether your model interacts with users. Models may need retraining on a regular basis with new data to pick up on new patterns or trends. This training could come from new data sets or from interactions with users. The system needs monitoring. This means tracking system outages, errors, data processing volume and speed, and how successfully it predicts results. Machine learning systems also require maintenance. As with any production system, this means fixing bugs, adding features that didn't make it into version one, and the like. Machine learning specific maintenance could include testing other models and settings to see if performance improves. Okay, the next slide. Yes, this is the machine learning process. The first three we see the focus on user, define objective, collect data. All these will be done in the first phase, that is the data phase. The train and the test model, uh, this will be done in uh, modeling phase. And the third, that is the predict and evaluate, this we will be doing in the uh, third phase, that is the producting. So as you can see, the arrow pointing back from the prediction to the data shows the iterative nature of ML. Because the model needs retraining with the new data in order to pick up new patterns and for achieving the results which are which we are looking for uh, so move to the next slide yes before this video you know we humans uh, always uh, test the results from the computers for example uh, uh, imagine if you are in if Let's we play. are in exam giving no don't play this Okay, uh, for example, uh, if we are in an exam hall and uh, we are uh, solving any one uh, problematic question, so there we need to do the addition, like uh, uh, any number, like 24 or 20. We will be knowing the sum, like 24 plus 20 will be 44. But though, though we will check it from through the calculator. So we assume our technology will work as designed. But you know, even a well-designed machine learning can also 
uh, experience issues when it picks up on biases found in the data now imagine that uh, we are trying to teach a computer to recognize any object so basically we may end up teaching it on our own bias so that's how bias happens in the ml and this is how ml will collect different different patterns of the same object now we will see some common applications of uh, machine learning uh, you might be knowing that uh, machine learning helps in uh, navigation gives us suggestions translates the stuff uh, and also in voice recognition so how all this works in our introduction part we came to know that in traditional software if we are having any problems so we need to write a code for its solution but it is not the case in the ml but in in, in ml computer it has learned solution by finding patterns in uh, data now we will uh, go through the video in which we will learn more about uh, machine learning and human bias uh, prabhakar play the video again close your eyes and picture a shoe okay did anyone picture this this how about this we may not even know why but each of us is biased toward one shoe over the others now imagine that you're trying to teach a computer to recognize a shoe you may end up exposing it to your own bias that's how bias happens in machine learning but first what is machine learning Well, it's used in a lot of technology we use today. Machine learning helps us get from place to place, gives us suggestions, translates stuff, even understands what you say to it. How does it work? With traditional programming, people hand code the solution to a problem step by step. With machine learning, computers learn the solution by finding patterns in data. So it's easy to think there's no human bias in that. But just because something is based on data, doesn't automatically make it neutral. Even with good intentions, it's impossible to separate ourselves from our own human biases. So, our human biases become part of the technology we create in many different ways. There's interaction bias. Like this recent game where people were asked to draw shoes for the computer. Most people drew ones like this. So, as more people interacted with the game, the computer didn't even recognize these. Latent bias. For example, If you were training a computer on what a physicist looks like and you're using pictures of past physicists, your algorithm will end up with a latent bias skewing towards men. And selection bias. Say you're training a model to recognize faces. Whether you grab images from the internet or your own photo library, are you making sure to select photos that represent everyone? Since some of our most advanced products use machine learning, we've been working to prevent that technology from perpetuating negative human bias. from tackling offensive or clearly misleading information from appearing at the top of your search results page to adding a feedback tool in the search bar so people can flag hateful or inappropriate autocomplete suggestions it's a complex issue and there's no magic bullet but it starts with all of us being aware of it so we can all be part of the conversation because technology should work for everyone okay so next we have machine learning privacy um so as we know that uh, ml system require lots of data in order to make successful predictions so what if the data is sensitive uh, sensitive means uh, related to the people's uh, names credit card number or their medical history so for all this we need to train uh, um, model by giving it information about thousands of people their symptoms and medical history so all this involves personal information right that needs to be kept private so there are three steps to protect uh, sensitive data that is uh, step one we gather and uh, select uh, only the data which is important and in the step two uh, is to identify any sensitive data from our data set and uh, in the set uh, in the step three we will protect the uh, private data and that is that can be done by controlling access to data or by altering the data so 
machine learning privacy is important because uh, when we maintain privacy we build good trust with users so the next topic is what can ml do and that will be continued by nilambika so over to you nilambika okay thank you so much hello to everyone good evening to one and all present here i'm nilambika from iisc department 6th sem so under this uh, machine learning beginner session which is hosted by jdsc uh, and dsc bidu i'm going to mainly talk about four topics namely first one being what can ml do and going into next is deep about machine learning artificial intelligence and deep learning third one being short history of ml and the last one that is application of ml so this one what can ml do so let's understand what at what range we can trust the machines as now almost everything is done by machines but we must know what is the range a machine could help us so let's see how a machine will help us next slide bro so to understand machine first these are the main three keywords which everyone should be clear about so as you can see here on each one of it linked together but we can't say that everything as artificial intelligence machine learning deep learning these all are the same thing you might you all might have come across this words very often you know as uh, artificial intelligence is one of the booming area and machine learning is also uh, one of the most trending topic now but we must know what is the clear difference between artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning so it's going to be interesting so now first let's understand what is basically artificial intelligence am i audible yes okay so artificial intelligence it is a technology which is involved to do something smart now as you can see this is a sort of venn diagram which you can uh, all uh, understand that artificial intelligence includes machine learning one second one second and machine learning includes deep learning so artificial intelligence covers machine learning deep learning along with rules based approach this is the only difference between artificial intelligence machine learning the main key difference artificial intelligence basically tries to imitate our human intelligence it includes a wide area to imitate what a human can think so this is artificial intelligence next coming to machine learning yes sir no 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 previous slide machine learning as you have seen as you have heard just now as my friends explained there is no rule based approach here and there is no need to tell the machine what it it should do explicitly it will learn itself and it will figure out by the patterns which you give in the data this is machine learning but it is a kind of artificial intelligence you should keep that in mind next is deep learning deep learning is a type of machine learning again the picture explains it clearly a specific type of machine learning but here there is one technique called neural control which uh, will be going to study further deeply so here just a short uh, you just know, need to know that it is a technique where uh, it connects multiple models to uh, solve some complex uh, problems that's all about deep learning the only main difference here we should know is that artificial intelligence includes machine learning deep learning and along with traditional program that so after understanding all these things there is a little knowledge required to understand what is ml as you can see here this when diagram can be viewed in two ways you guys can see that ml is a part of big data algorithm and technology and also big data includes ml algorithms include ml and technology also includes ml so this try to understand you need to understand that ml is a very important part and it required for the technology which is being used today so next so 
now comes the applications of machine learning there are five types of application first one being the classification second one is regression third clustering fourth uh, sequence prediction and fifth time transfer i'll be dealing with the first three so let's know, understand what is classification so any person should be classified like like what what uh, should it do so here is the example of a, as you can see there is a picture of an animal now if you want our machine it is depend on us how we design, design our machine like if you want the output should be easy to tiger then the output machine should the machine's output should be like yes or another way you can uh, design your machine as what animal is this so the machine will give you output as whether it is a tiger it is a lion it's depending upon the human developer who will set the machine that is classification no regression slide sorry yeah. and here the main point about regression is here the output will be a number what so what basically happens in regression is it consists of uh, some mathematical methods where a data scientist can predict uh, some outcome the here the outcome will be a continuous that is regression example uh, it can be like here you can see there is a google map given over there and uh, there is a red line marking from point a to point b so regression what basically does that how long will it take for a traveler to pr travel from point a to point b these all comes under the regression that's about regression next another application is clustering here you guys can see that some sort of data is grouped here and another uh, that data is again grouped in two types so you might be confused getting confused what this symbols really mean that uh, that is nothing but among many symbols present in uh, our curriculum some that size group it has only numbers the second circle which is ignorant as we have, there is no moment that is for the numbers group of numbers and another one cluster which is pointing out that those are this number similar with is 2 to 2 and 7 the clustering basically basically what it does is it groups the data which is having some similar property that's the work of clustering and uh, by seeing this you might be thinking that every clustering will be a spherical shape but no that's not the case it's just an example it depends on the user like what criteria is used to classify what that needs to be classified first class then and at last there are two main topics which you, i think you, you all should know it is really important so basically these applications can be classified into two types one is supervised and another one is unsupervised so you might be uh, figuring out the what the uh, both means supervised means they are already giving the labeled data or it has a supervisor like a teacher who will guide you so they are giving the labeled data and supervisor the word itself says that there is no guidance but machine will be trained using information that is not labeled like uh, example is clustering it groups it unsorted data and learns by itself whereas the example for supervised comes as classification and regression Yeah, that's fine. I will end my discussion here. Next, I will hand over this session to our lead. Thank you. Thank you, Nilambika. Am I audible? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Nilambika had left the session. I mean, uh, left her topic. Uh, up until clustering so uh, now comes the semantic similarity uh, which is uh, being present and presented on your screen you guys can see it uh, semantic similarity similarity could be a great example here to understand clustering 
clustering is nothing but pairs okay uh, in general i'm talking about so semantic similarities are nothing but the semantic analyzation of a particular person so uh, there is something called semantic readings in machine learning wherein uh, your reactions your facial reactions and all those things are uh, you know taken into consideration uh, to train a particular machine to detect a model where it recognizes if the person is happy or sad okay that's something called semantics so uh, now coming to the sequence prediction so se sequence prediction is nothing but uh, uh, something where a machine tries to understand uh, how uh, the moment a user hovers over his keyboard that's called gliding glide typing you might have heard about it and uh, from whenever you start gliding over your keyboard from s m a l l if you just glide you don't you don't really have to type it and you just have to glide over your keyboard and the machine learns to understand what word is the user is the end user going to type okay that is something called sequence prediction sequence of uh, words sequence of numbers so and so on and so forth so uh, you guys can uh, know more about this by using the crowdsource application which link i have already provided in the chat box already so uh, now comes the style transfer uh, you guys can see a tortoise a picture of tortoise in the screen tortoise plus there are a lot of waves so uh, so the combination of different patterns used to perform or uh, get a desired output so that we guys can understand what the traits are okay so uh, this is a living example you guys are seeing on in the screen <clears throat> and uh, apart from that i would like to tell you what are the types of machine learning so you guys can see there are different types of machine learning if you guys know about uh, what type of machine what are the different types of machine learning you guys can tell me if you guys are uh, interested to tell you guys can unmute just unmute and tell me what are the types of machine learning okay uh it's already present in the screen you guys can as you guys can see uh so recommending next word in the android sms app based on the words typed so far that is nothing but sequence prediction in machine learning so now labeling email as spam or not can you uh, guys uh, you know have a guess what could be the answer labeling yeah, email okay. as spam sorry hello or you guys can uh, just ping in the chat labeling email as spam or not that is called classification classification is a part in machine learning that deals with such things so uh, classification is nothing but taking out the odd one out wherein we teach a machine Uh, by set of given data there are data models to teach a particular uh, machine about how a spam mail is constructed and how a legitimate mail is being made so this is how we can teach a machine now also we can uh, look on to the other questions like identifying trends among a group of people who have bought a new music release identifying the trends most probably what would be the answer we have just seen about it it's clustering dealing with different opinions is clustering and uh, that's nothing but the pairs okay now a bot that reads the news in the voices of famous actors what could be the right output right answer for this a bot that reads the news in the voices of famous actors these are all beginners exercises we are taking you so far whatever you have you know been taught here and by the end of this session i will sh i will share the resources of uh, week 1 and week 2 so that you guys can you know 
uh, refer those res resources uh, to educate yourself, which is obviously self-based learning. Style transfer is the right answer, as we have also seen uh, a tortoise and the combination of waves back in the slides. So determining workout activity based on phone movement. Anyone? One living example is uh, how many steps we have walked today. Sequence prediction. That is classification. Classification. It's also interesting. You just uh, were near, but do research. Do some research after uh, your answer. You'll 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 get more things to explore on yourself. Okay. Identifying famous landmarks in a photo. Prediction. That too is a classification model. So now suggesting spelling corrections. Typos which are Android mobiles do very often. Anyone has any idea? That is clustering. So these are all beginners exercise. Uh, so what have we learned till now? We are just reviewing it. What is ML? What is ML versus rule based learning? Idea to implementation. Artificial intelligence versus machine learning versus deep learning. Types of ML, classification, clustering, regression, sequence prediction, style transfer. All these things we have learned already or we just have an idea what these things are. We, we just have a brief idea. So hope you all are aware about Crowdsource app. And uh, as I have men mentioned earlier, start doing crowdsourcing. Uh, there are weekly you know, uh, weekly contributors recognized by uh, crowdsource Google. Okay, you guys can hear me. Hello. Yes. 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 Yeah. Huh. Okay. Uh, then uh, these are the answers to your simple questions. So I think it's time to conclude as we have uh, stretched this meeting more than one hour long. So I guess you guys might be tired of this heat, which is around us, summer season. Uh, so if you have any questions to ask, you guys can ask. Also, I'm going to share one Google form, which is very much important for you guys uh, to you know get your certificates right. Because if you guys are attending all the sessions and you're not getting any certificates, that's that might feel bad to yourself. I mean, uh, you might not have 100% satisfaction. Uh, you'll just question yourself, what did I get out of this? So I will share a link which you have to fill. The certificates will be mailed directly to you. <clears throat> it will, it, it's basically a workshop survey form. One second. Till then, if you have any doubt, you guys can ask. Okay, I'm sharing the link. Please, I request everyone not to, you know, uh, make this link public. Just keep it with yourself. It would be a better option. Can you see the link which I have sent in the group? All. Uh, all you guys who all are present in the meeting are supposed to fill that form. 
and uh, uh, it will ask for the crowdsource level you guys can start doing crowdsourcing and deadline to fill this form is 15th may okay and please i request not to share it with anyone those who are in the meeting only deserve the certificate right so don't make it public unnecessarily am i clear anyone arpita yeah Prabhakar, it is asking uh, beginner track or which? Yeah, it's to... it's beginner track. It's beginner track, everyone. That's why I told you to fill it right away. Aryan Modi. Yes. You're from uh, which semester? Four semesters. Okay, okay. Uh, Lakshmi. B. Uh, like fourth semester, did it started or I think you're still in third? You're still giving your exams. Despite of that, you just had uh, today's exam, right? I mean, uh, you had a external exam today. Yeah. Uh, despite of that, you guys are attending. That's like, it. I think he's not. I think he's not from our college. I guess. Okay, it's it's all right. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, Arpita Swami, there in drop down, you have to select Kurnanak Dev Engineering College, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. there, there are colleges mentioned, so you have to select a college. And I request everyone, whoever was present in the meeting, to fill in the form and don't make it public, please. Fill it today itself. Am I clear? 